Hey everyone, Koopsy from the whole box and dice. Yes, this is a dinosaur hat on my head. Went to the Magic the Gathering Ixalan pre-release last night. It was pretty cool, so I just thought I'd wrap this around today because, uh, like, you know, who doesn't want a dinosaur on their head? Um, I want to do something called Leader 5 Words today. It's where we go through the list of the Dragon Ball Super Leaders. I give you the five words that I think currently sum up that leader and then a little bit of information afterwards. Just a bit of fun. I really enjoy doing this. Um, you've probably seen it if you like follow sports teams and stuff. I'll do it at the start of the season. that will be like three words or five words or a sentence or something just to sum up how they think they can go. So for all you new players, if you want a bit of a snapshot or for all you uh, grizzled veterans, feel free to agree, disagree. Let me know in the comments. Can you come up with a better five words for some of your favorite leaders? Let's kick things off with uh, with my dude from from day one, pretty much. This is Champa, and I think the most appropriate thing for Champa is can't beat aggro and card draw. Champa's a great deck. It's probably the best deck at the moment. Um, although I see a lot of different builds for Champa, I think the red blue aggro build is the best way to go. You make use of the promo line with Trunks for just insane late game value. Between Trunks and the promo Goku, you get a lot of power behind Champa. The double strike engine is nuts. Really like Champa in a mono blue critical build as well. It's something that I've been playing around with recently. Should have a deck up about that one shortly, but just love Champa. He is uh, he's just all he's just all power right now, and I look forward to adding to that come set two. Green Goku, and this one is the uh, double strike, and this one is last minute assignment submission fail. I feel like this leader was either slapped together at the very end or he was done first and then they decided to do other cool ones after Goku. The double strike is nice, of course, requires an answer, but it means your opponent wakens pretty easily. It's hard to keep them at five because you've got to keep them at six. Otherwise, they'll be able to awaken. So not a huge fan of this leader, although I have seen some good decks. I just don't think they're at the top of the pops. Starter Goku or Tempo Goku, however you want to frame him up. Too difficult for new players. Too difficult for new players is my five words. I think this is a great leader. I think he's an excellent leader. The fact that you can untap energy is massively underrated. If you can outvalue your opponent, I did a deck on this very concept. Works really well. I just think it's a tough kind of leader concept for new players. I think it's a tricky slope for them getting into the game. Probably would have started them off with... Maybe the double strike Goku, um, maybe Champa probably is a character that I could have seen them starting off with. They're probably the most probably, or maybe Hit even. Hit probably would have been a good starter choice too. Golden Freezer. This one I'm sure will be a bit of contention. I'm going to go with Misplayed Leader, Control, Not Swarm. I think the people that play Swarm, it's a great deck. Don't get me wrong, it's a fun deck, it's a fast deck. Um, you know, but it's just, I don't think it's the optimal way to play this Golden Freezer. I think you're mulching your guys, keeping up that energy, being able to drop King Coles, be able to play Beerus, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Blue Yellow, I think, is the shell for this Freezer. Swarm's a good deck, just don't think it's the most optimal way you can build Golden Freezer. Freezer, Galactic Emperor, cute tricks, not competitive enough. Love the untap, it's very annoying versus a Carver that swings for days and days and days. That engine's not better than Champa with the card draw, in my opinion. Um, although the Raging Carver trick does become a bit more viable there. I do think it's a solid leader. I just think it's a little bit too cute, and when it pays off, it's amazing, but too often your opponent just outvalues you, and that feels bad. Up next, Captain Ginyu, and I was so pumped when the Ginyu Force was going to be a part of this set. Five words for Ginyu will be RNG, turn six or bust. I just, once again, like the Freezer deck. I know you can win on turn four. I think that was probably an earlier meta when the game was a little bit newer and people weren't exactly valuing the early game as much or they were overvaluing some of the late drop stuff without the proper ways to facilitate it. If you hit that Ginyu on turn six and it doesn't get bloodlusted, you're laughing. If you don't have a board when you play Ginyu, it's not bad, but it's they're a better card. So definitely there's an RNG element. It's a good deck for new players, though. It's a good way to wrap your, hand around, uh, wrap your head around it because you do have that turn four win, and you also have some value, obviously, with Ginyu late. And if you can stack Ginyus, then 
Feels good. Feels real good if you can do that. Early success does not equal excellence. Vegeta's a great leader. I love the critical. I think Champa is a better critical leader than Vegeta, just purely because of the card draw. Um, critical is a very annoying mechanic to play around. Don't get me wrong. I just think Champa does it better indirectly than Vegeta actually does. A double strike crit is a lot better than the awakening that you can potentially put yourself in. If you lower yourself down with Vegeta too much, you leave your opponent, it gives him an opportunity to kind of clap you back. So I don't like that with Vegeta. But he flew out of the gates. He got a lot of love early. And I can see why a lot of people still bring in their Vegeta decks to their local game stores for their weekly tournaments. Vardos up next. And this one is unique ability doesn't win games. Really like Vardos's ability. Might want to... Uh, blah, blah. Try that again. One of my early decks was Vardos. Um, it was like Vardos Control. I thought, oh yeah, with like Confident Batamo and stuff, I can do a lot of work with Vardos. It just, it's very annoying for your opponent, but it doesn't really cost them the game, so... Sorry, Vardos. Up next is Hit, and I was all for Team Hit at the start of the DBS TCG. I still think Hit has some potential. I'm not sure. I'm almost convinced he's not better than Champa, which makes it always hard for me to want to, you know, plug a leader in an aggro deck. So I'm going to go with... Hits is forces combo, maybe red blue. Like maybe if you can get some card draw in there, you can substitute hit. You know, even as I say that, maybe even red green um, is a better shell for hit. But there's a shell in there for hit. I'm just not a hundred percent sure exactly what it is and how competitive it is compared to something like Champa. Beerus, and I know I've done a couple of decks on Beerus. This one is. Ramp plus Whis. Good game. That'll be GG, my friends. Beerus is nuts. He's the best control leader, in my opinion, by Country Mile. I've been playing him in this blue-green deck, which I did a video on recently. It's filthy. Go check it out. It's a horrible, horrible deck. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. Beerus is just nuts. Don't underestimate Beerus. He's a great leader. Up next, we've got Gohan. Gohan. I, I, I don't know, Gohan. I don't know what you want me to say. Um, needs more than promo Bardock. Gohan's an interesting card. Like Broly, I think Bardock makes the deck better. I'm not convinced it's a top anything deck. You lose the turn that people play threats in Dragon Ball Super, so... I don't know. The card draw's nice. Card draw is, is definitely nice. Super Saiyan Blue Sun Goku probably should win more games. Dual Attack, it's a nice ability. I think this card has a lot of potential. I see a lot of decks try to maximize it and just fall short. I feel like it should be doing better out there in the world. Last, and certainly not least, depending on who you talk to, I don't think it's that good. The Menace from my first couple of weeks of testing an undefeatable deck until I worked out <laughs> that you just blitz it out of the water or outvalue it late. This is Broly, the legendary Saiyan, and the most appropriate five words for Broly. Are you feeling lucky, punk? The RNG in this deck triggers me to no avail. Bardock will help. Yep, for sure. Um, promo Brolies are essential. I don't care what you say. You need to play the promo. Unconditional removal gives you a three drop. I hate RNG. It's amazing when you need a six and you roll a six, or when you're in jail and Monopoly and you need doubles on your third try. It is horrible when anything but a seven lands you in jail and you roll a seven. Broly's no different. The RNG is fun because the payoff is huge. But I just don't like the risk. That was five words, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments. Did I get any of these leaders wrong? Can you come up with a better five words? I really like doing this. It's just, and it's a nice, fun video for me to do. I mean, I'm wearing a dinosaur hat, so why not have a bit of fun? 
with it. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new. Got a few more decks on the way for Dragon Ball Super, plus plenty of stuff featuring uh, my little dino buddy up here for Ixalan coming out. It is an exciting time. Stick close to the channel. Star Wars Destiny 2. It's all happening. Check us out on the socials. Peace.